Bear Down Bears fans, welcome to another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Lance Briggs in the building. My God, back to back wins, Lance. I had to wear a suit for it. I kid, the suit has nothing to do with it, but it was. Uh, it was. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm surprised. I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not. Back to back wins, both divisional wins. Feels good in the building right now. And I think that you saw the most complete game from this Chicago Bears team that we've seen all season. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've look, I've been I've been seeing progress. You know, I've been seeing progress. Really, for me, the progress really began um, when Eberflus took over um, as a defensive coordinator. But uh, it was it's sometimes it's hard to see the progress when you see the W's and you have a yep. 14 game loss, you know, never, you well, know, there wasn't a lot of W's. That's the, right. That's the you know, when it wasn't hard. a lot. So you haven't, so it's hard to see the, the positives that are happening, you yep. know, but, but I've seen the positives. And to me, the first, the first step was, was guys stepping on the field with the right attitude and putting forth the right effort. Right. Okay. Now I started to see that effort being put out there, which means that, you know, and I got, I got beat up on a little bit because I, I said, I gave my coaching grade a higher, Give it a higher grade. I said these guys, you know, they, they they weren't picked to win this this division. Right. But I'm starting to see a team that's going out there that's coached to to play hard. Okay. You give yourself a chance if you play hard. You have no chance at all if you don't come out with the right attitude and play hard. Yep. So I've been seeing that. Plus, you know, um, um, I've been seeing more consistency. We've been seeing a lot of consistency out of the defense, and we've started to see some major production out of the offense. So, you know, I mean, one of the question marks, can they finish games? Uh, you know, uh, we've seen them finish games. We've seen them play uh, dominant fashion against uh, one of the better teams in the league and the number one team in the division. So, uh, um, you know, and obviously the question marks of our coach, yeah. our quarterback, yeah. you know, and I'm, I, I will always stand on, listen, the grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. It is a roll of the dice for anybody else that you bring in to, yeah. to, to, to run this team. And especially when you have somebody that is more than capable, that will do a great job of running the team, you do them, treat them right. And the wins mask a lot, right? Listen, I, I, I was, you know, talking about this on the post post game show yesterday that um, Flus talks exactly the same. Uh, afterwards, right. The, the play that most bears fans are pretty irate about on offense. When Luke gets, runs a fourth and one to, 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 <laughs> To DJ Moore, DJ Moore for some reason, a very very confusing play, a lot of fury, and uh, Flu said something that in a loss would have set Bears fans off. We looked at our play sheet; that's a play we like. That we like that on the down and distance. He said the same thing that we've had fury about all year, but it feels better in a way, right? You're just like, uh, it's just Flu's. All right, yeah, I mean, and now I I think that you're seeing even so, right? Like we keep saying we want to see these things that, that we want to see the bears accomplish these things. They actually keep checking things off the list. The thing that they checked off the list yesterday for me was off of turnovers, getting points. That was in it. I mean, we had eight turnovers in two weeks. We had yep. 13 points. Yep. Yesterday you go out there, you're able to get a touchdown off of turnovers. You got to keep developing that takeaways, T- takeaways, takeaways, takeaways. Uh, and I think that the, the takeaways, right. Even the conversation there, that's the biggest feather in Fluce's cap because you're talking about a team now that is top five defensively over the last five weeks. Yep. And, and again, like I've said, of the consistency that I've seen out of this defense, the, the things that they've needed to adjust um, to, to, to propel them to where they are now, it, it's, it's happened. Yep. You know, um, you bring Montez Sweat in uh, and you get a barrage of interceptions. You know, um, the, the, yeah. the, the, the quarterback pressures, the sacks, you know, the things that we're looking for. Now, now by no means are they playing a perfect game. They're, they got gashed. You know, when Jameer Gibbs, guys not getting their gaps correctly, and, and then the second level, the linebackers and safeties not getting downhill right now. Um, but even so, you know, you have plays where guys weren't necessarily in their gaps for not coming downhill, but you get a guy like a Jack Sanborn who takes two guys out and makes the play in the backfield. Yeah. So, you know, you talk about wins, disguises, things. You know, plays like that disguise things because there is one guy who oh, yeah. who went above and beyond. You know, on that play, uh, he was a stud on that play. So uh, um, there are still plenty of things to correct or or to get better at and to work on, but they're playing at a very high level. You know, so the thing is, is is 
you see the progress. Everybody wants to see the process. We're seeing the progress. Now we continue. We need to continue to build on it. Finish strong in this season and build on it. <clears throat> Let's talk about it, right? Let's focus in on that defensive side of the football. Okay. Where's the – where did you see – the tide changed with this defense first. What was the one thing that you looked at? Because over the last three weeks, they've been absolutely elite, finally able to finish off. No matter what we say, right? Like, we know how the narratives change and all that. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, we've beaten Detroit. Detroit's yeah. going to be an offense that's struggling, not an offense that is a high-powered offense. That's how the narrative's going to go. Yeah. That's a high-powered offense. That's an offense that puts up a lot of points every week. Mm -hmm. You held them to 13 points in a half. And then they went scoreless in the second half. Where did you see the defense kind of start to change? This year or this, this year? Game? This year as a whole. Uh, when, uh, you know, the, uh, when Aberflus took over. Yeah. You know, and it's all about the effort. It's, to me, it's about the effort and the, the, the numbers. And, and there was a, a cool stat, you know, on the defensive possessions in that second half. Because in the first half, they gave up, you know, they had third down opportunities they didn't get off. Yeah. You know, and, and again, to, to still only give up 13 points in an entire game is pretty impressive. But in that second half, there was a stat like, you know. Uh, I, think I, got, I think I know where you're going there. Let me see. Yeah, punt, fumble, punt, <laughs> yeah. punt, fumble, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a cool stat. And that's the stat. That's the stat that when everybody is playing the, the this game the way exactly the way they're supposed to, everybody, the linebackers are getting downhill, recognizing whether it's run, pass, and, and D linemen are standing their gaps. That's the, that's the consistency you want to see each week. And here it is right here. Three and out, three and out, three and out, fumble recovery, turnover on downs, turnover on downs, interception. That's that's the that, second half. That's, that's the second my half. Years. All right. That's what you want to see weekly yeah. from your defense. And, uh, and they're capable. They're capable of doing that. Now, you know, you add a few more pieces, namely, namely that 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 three technique, yeah. that elite. You need elite. Yeah. Okay. You need elite. Uh, when I say elite, I'm talking Tommy Harris. I'm talking Aaron Donald. You know, what I mean, I'm talking those type of guys. And there's plenty. There's there's plenty to choose from in this uh, upcoming draft. Yeah. I, and listen, you could draft one or right. I gave you the scenario uh, before we started the show of uh, the first team I'm calling New York. Y'all need a quarterback, don't you? What's going on? And I feel, to me personally, I feel good enough about Justin Fields to go other other places, right? It doesn't mean that I feel like he's the, the franchise quarterback for the next 10 years right now, but what I do feel like is that he's moving in the right direction, and, and I think the numbers will back that up as well. What I also see is uh, New York needs a quarterback real bad. Y'all hey, uh, not using Dexter the right way anyway. You yeah. want to trade Justin for – No, no, the first overall pick. Oh, oh. Because I'm going to get a bevy of picks anyway – I don't think New York is a quarterback away. So you want to trade with a team that's probably got some long-term turmoil still in there. Okay, I'm confused. I'm confused. You want to trade Justin away? First overall pick. You want to trade – so you – The first overall pick to the Giants. You want to trade – And I get a bunch of picks back and let me get Dexter Lawrence up off of you. So you want to trade our, our, our franchise QB? Where, where are you hearing this? Okay, at? I'm not here. I know. I'm, I don't understand. You want to? It's the, the sinuses, brother. It is. It is. So it right is. now we have Carolina's pick. Yes. First overall pick. Absolutely. Trading that. Yes. To the Giants. I'm getting picks back. Absolutely. And okay. Dexter Lawrence. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. okay. I don't want Saquon Barkley. Okay. We we got that. We got that. That's all right. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. Uh, because I feel like right. Do you want to go? I think now right with Montez Sweat. Unless you feel like you have a. Jalen Carter type player in the first round or something like that, <clears throat> who's really been a solid piece, but he fits with Philly to me. Unless you feel like there's that level of talent in the first round, I would say you want more of a veteran piece there, especially because you can get more picks back, get that veteran piece, and now your defense, you're not talking about we're two, three years away with this defense. Mm -hmm. You're talking about this defense is ready to go. Let's make sure that our offense is on the same page. This well. You know, this team, this Bears team, that's they're one of the youngest in the in the league. Yeah. I think it's important to to maintain that. You know, if you're gonna get if you're gonna pull in talent, you need that I think that talent needs to be young. Uh it needs to be talented and young. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um and so, you know, bringing in um twenty six years old for Dexter Lawrence, by the way. I like it. <laughs> then, I then had to I, go then, had to go, yeah, I mean I had to then, go. Yes. I knew where you were going. There I we go. knew where you yep. were going. Only four sacks on the season, but no stack. I mean, he didn't yeah, yeah. pocket. Yes. So, uh, well, well, you know, I mean, it's, 
if he's playing nose, it's, it's different. Like this, this is there's, the, you know, the, so the the three techniques that I've that I've looked, at, I looked at about nine of them. Yeah. Um, there's one that's from LSU. He's six foot six. All right. He doesn't. To me, he doesn't fit that mold. Mm-hmm. All right. The rest of them are about six foot two. Yeah. To six foot one. Mm-hmm. All right. But they're quick. Yeah. And violent. All right. That's the that's the type of of attention that they have to draw uh, to 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 uh, to garner from the offensive line. They have to be quick up. That you have to you have to account for this guy right now. Yeah. We have to get two guys on him right now. And when we do that, we get two guys on them. Guess who else is getting all? Guess who's getting the one on ones? Sweat. We get, yep. All three of the I, other new linemen are on getting the one on one. Sweat. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, 100%. I'm, I'm with you, man. Like, you're, it, it is impressive the defense this team is, is has built up this season. I think that is a, a, a feather in Matt Eberflus's cap. I think that there's a lot more that they can add to this team as well. Telling you, I'm telling you right now that defense backfield is very good. Yeah, they're very good, and and you're starting to see these picks coming. Oh yeah, you add this elite guy next year, um, and and of course, I mean, not just, I mean, add more. And I'm not just, but I'm specifically saying, in your starting lineup, you know, with Montez Sweat and Gakwe, uh, Billings, and whoever this elite three technique is. Yeah, we're gonna have two. Two, three arguable DBs that that are going to be arguing for Pro Bowl seasons. Yeah, they're going to have. We're going. It's going to come in bunches. Going to get a bunch because that ball has to come out. Yeah, you know they're going to be jumping routes left and right, and they're going to be taking it to the house. We're going to be so doggone happy. Everybody's going to be like, "Oh man, I love the cover two again. Oh, I love what you guys do." <laughs> it was a weird time, like where people were just like, "Cover two don't work." It was like. When the, when? People are running cover two all over the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thrown off. I was like, you think the Bears are the only one running cover two? Like, right, right. It's, it's, you know, it's just in a defensive playbook, right? Like, it's there. But, no, it. it I will say this, though, right? And I think the conversation on Fluce now is you've built this up. We love what you're building. Are you building this as the head coach or as the D.C.? Because Flus wants to be the CEO. He said that when he came here. I don't know if maybe that's changed while he's seeing success now, right? Maybe as a as a coach, he's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I would love for him to be like that. My value in Flus is as the, the play caller of this team. And I feel like Flus feels his value is as the CEO. Maybe that's changed. Are you still all in on Flus if he's not calling plays next year? Because I don't know if somebody else, a coach he's going to bring in, coordinator he's going to bring in, is going to call plays the same way. Because I'll tell you this right now, I watched the season of Allen Williams, and he did not. Yeah. This yeah. defense was nowhere near as right. aggressive as it is right now well, under Allen Williams. Yeah. Now, you, you had, had less talent. You had less talent. But I would <laughs> – some distractions as well. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you got to stop. But – I, I think now, right, like you're seeing the potential of this defense and you're seeing Flus go, all right, this isn't going to work the way that we normally run this. What are we going to do? We got to be more aggressive. Let's let's blitz a little more. Not a crazy amount, but let's attack. Seeing an adjustment from my head coach I, or from my from my D.C., who is my head coach. Mm-hmm. I like that more than how we've seen the other play callers do it. That's and that's that's scary to me. Right. That's a, that's, that's legit. That's legit. Like, you know. We had times where uh, we, you know, my when Lovey came in, you know, we had uh, um, Ron Rivera, mm-hmm. and then um, Bob Babich and Lovey took over at times, and then it came, it, it was uh, handed over to uh, Rod Marinelli, and we had times where you know it was great. We had times where it was it was great with Ron. It was it was, we were down. We took a took a step back with Bob. Yeah, you know, um, and then, and there was a time where Bob took over. There were times where Lovey's like, "I'm taking over," yeah, you yeah. know, and and then we got to Rob Marinelli where we got we got back to our hay again, yeah. you know, and so it's hard to say, but I'll tell you this: whoever he brings in, we know that if if if, if everything hits the fan, we know that you can take over, and we're gonna be all right. I do believe yeah. that. I, I, I do believe this that. Um, it would be, it would be harder to screw up what these guys are doing right now. Yeah, especially with added pieces, because you'll see it. You should be able to see it fast. Like, listen, 
you know, we're, why are, coach, why are you getting away from what we were doing? Yeah. You know, and that's and these guys. Are, this isn't high school. This isn't college. They'll this speak is, up. Yeah. Speak hey, hey, look. Up. After this season, we know they'll speak up. That's <laughs> right. Right. Listen, we know what successful. We know what yeah. we have to do to be successful. And, and you're asking us to do things differently. Right. You know. So I, you know, I'm, I see them continually wanting to build on something. You know. I mean, I, if, if 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 I were one of them, you know, my goal would would be, hey, listen, there's a there's a '85 Bears, there's a 2006 Bears. I want I want. I want to outbeat them. I want to outplay them yeah. and get our names up, etched up there. That start, should be their goal. Start with 2018. You, you outplay the 2018 Bears, you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's start with attainable yeah. goals. Here. Listen, you got to. I mean, catching up to 2006 is crazy. But, but you know, listen, <laughs> it's it's attainable. It's attainable if you if it starts up here. Yeah, it, it's. I I'm. I guess the only part I'm nervous about, right, was like, so you were on the field. You mentioned right the different coordinators you had. Were you most comfortable when Lovey was calling plays? Do you feel like the defense was most comfortable when Lovey was calling plays, or or Lovey when was, Rod uh, was calling plays? Uh, um, you know, with Ron, all of them were a little different. Yeah, you know, Ron liked to dial up blitzes. Right. Lovey liked to play cover two and and use your uh, use your front four to get there. You know, um, Bob was a little more uh, um, hybrid kind of. Bl- yeah, he was a little more uh, more lovey yeah, 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 you know, maybe maybe a hybrid, maybe a hybrid. He was a little more lovey And then uh, Rod, you know, Rod was, you know, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to, if we're going to, we can dial it up or we can sit back and play this. Rod was, hybrid. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, but there were, there were reasons why we did it, but we dialed up blitzes with Rod. Yeah. You know, and it was one of those deals where we, lovey kind of just really kind of started to really buy into it. You know, he was like, yeah, he was, and, he, and it was a lot of trust, too. <laughs> well, y'all were sacking a lot of quarterbacks. We were getting after it. You know, we were getting after it. You know, but it was also – but if you're blitzing, it's also – it's also, you know, the D linemen, they feel like that's a level of disrespect. They're like, man, we're blitzing because you think I can't rush the quarterback. Mm. All right? So that's that's also the other thing. That's the other issue, too. With, you know, people, Some people don't understand. They're like, man, why don't you guys blitz more? Well, because – your D linemen are over here. They're they're pissed off because you're like, why are you? Why are we blitzing? Because you don't think I can rush? Yeah, you know. And he was like, put me in a position. Give me a one on one. He was like, you got these guys out here chipping me all day. You know, chipping me here, and I'm getting doubled or they're kicking out here to me. And I was like, then somebody else needs to win. <clears throat> so it's you know it's a numbers game, and and if you're if you're worth your 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 weight and gold, yeah, you know, win your one on one, and we don't we, we won't need to prep a blitz. Yeah. That was that. I've never. I don't. I don't think anybody's ever said that. That D linemen get pissed off about the blitz. Yeah, because if you if you're blitz if you're dialing up a bunch of blitzes, D linemen are saying, okay, well you you're saying that I can't get to the quarterback, right? You know, and so it's it's one of those deals, man. It's one of those deals, and, I mean, and for and again, that's why it's important. It's the that's sack the politics numbers. Of it. That's yeah. different. That's and the different. sack numbers are less important as opposed to the you forcing the ball to come out. On Quick, time, yeah. Turnover, numbers. okay. <clears throat> so that's yeah. That's kind of that. I can see that. I get well. Listen, they could. They had nothing to to, to stand on this season, so that we needed more blitzes. But <laughs> till Sweat showed up, we we wasn't getting no pressure on the quarterback. You're right. You're right. Um, when when you look at now, right, these last three weeks though, and and really, I guess you could say maybe the last well three weeks since Justin's been back. So I say the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. Where's your comfortability level with the quarterback position right now? I've, I mean, I've been comfortable with it. I, you know, I've been comfortable with it. I just, it's about, you know, sometimes it's about weathering storms. Yeah. You know, you got to weather the storm. And when you're losing, you know, there's a lot that you're not, that, that, that you're disregarding, you know. So the progress, and the, for me, it's always been about um, what, what are we trying to do with him? Yeah. You know, um, you, if if you if you if you want him to be just a drop back passer and sit in the pocket, you know, then this probably isn't the place for him. Right. You know, and that sucks because I think he's a hell of a quarterback and I think he's a hell of a leader. Yeah. And you're going to find like I've I've played with twenty something quarterbacks. <laughs> I you told J Mac yesterday we're gonna play uh uh the game, uh, see how many he can remember. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> how many QPs he can remember that y'all played with? <laughs> I played with a lot of quarterbacks, you know, and and listen to a lot of them answer questions, you know, over and over about about you know the state of the Bears. Yeah, and for a kid that's that's I've you know I've been out of college. What this is his third year? Third year. 
man, it's uh, you, you got to feel like you got to feel like you're lucky to have a kid that can answer questions. Like you, you know that this kid's a leader. You know that he's a leader. He's and he's accountable. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just you know, and then you get him get him on the field, and he can make all the throws. All right. The the thing about him, he's he's 230 pounds. You know what I mean? Like he runs through. D tackles. Are you telling me you would have uh, sent them on a QB sneak on that fourth and one and not uh, DJ Moore? I'm not letting that play go. I was sick for a half of football. I was sick because you because you I, felt the uh, momentum go away. Right, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You know, um, and this is this is how I coach football. Yeah. You know, from my my high school and for my my youth, um, this the football football never comes. It's never comes down to one play. Right. Even though, you know, at the end of the game, it's a like field goal or whatever it is, there were so many battles during that game that you either won or lost that led to this. Yeah. Okay? So that play, and, and to me, like, like DJ Moore, you're a playmaker. Um, uh, Justin Fields, you're a playmaker. All right? We, if, we don't get this, if we don't get this fourth down call, the next play. Our yeah. defense is going to go get it back. Yeah. You're going to get another play because yeah. you're a playmaker. That's more important than us not getting that. What's most important is the next play because you have playmakers. If you don't have playmakers, then, you know, we're, I, I feel like we're doomed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can't coach it. Yeah. But I have to know that you and you need to understand that as a playmaker, listen, that fourth down, that's not going to matter because the next time we get the ball, we're going to score. Do you feel like, though, right, I feel like that, that goes to, like, dialing up blitzes and, and the defensive lineman being pissed off. Do you feel like that changed kind of the offensive dynamic for the first half because – my quarterback and or my running back are looking at the coach like, what do you – if I'm Deontay Ford, I'm like, I'm six feet tall, 210 pounds. Like, what – I can't I can't get a, a fourth and one? Right? Like, and you don't – and we don't see him run the football much after that. You know what I mean? Uh, if you – okay. Do you think that maybe that played into it, I guess, is the question. Do, okay, so here's here's the thing. All right. Are we – is this the is this the Deontay Foreman show? It is not. Is this the the DJ Moore show? It is not right. This this has to be a team game. It's the Chicago Bears. It doesn't yeah. it doesn't work that way, and you will you will you you will crumble yeah. as a team if you are led by guys that say, "What are you doing, Coach? Yeah. What are you doing? Why why would you run that play? Little why Pat, would you little to Pat me? Mahomes at the end of the game? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, his was his was for over a, over a penalty, a, a justified penalty. His yeah. was over a justified yes. penalty. It was right. a penalty. It was a penalty. It was, it, it was my literally God, a penalty. It was a penalty. Like. You know, um, and uh, but but you know the 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 idea and football is the ultimate team sport. Yeah, you know, 100%. You know, it's the ultimate team sport. You know, are there plays where I'm like, what are we doing? You know, you know, but but the, my thought my thought goes with the guy that's next to me that's on the field that's you know and I'm not running around telling everybody else. my guy is the, my my question is my or my comment is going to be next to the guy that I'm in the room with every day for the past eight years yeah you know we know each other well well enough that I know that 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 I might say this to you. But I ain't gonna say this to nobody else. Like I don't, we don't need to take. I gotta like, get this, it off my chest. I just want to say, yeah, yeah like, yeah, yeah. like, what are we doing? I don't know. Let's go play. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Let's go make some plays. You know what I mean? That's how fast it is. That's you know, and and so, so it, it's you know what? It, it, uh, again, you know, if that's the call, that's the call. Yeah. You know, uh, for us on the outside looking in, hated the call, <laughs> hated the call. But for <laughs> you guys that are on the field, yeah. for the guys that are on the field, that's the call they went with. We didn't make it. Let's rally. Let's get the ball back for him. Let's go get the ball back for him, you know, and give him another opportunity. And if you were the running back, nah, I didn't. He didn't get the call. Shoot, we didn't make it. But maybe next time I'm gonna get it. Yeah, you know. And, and what compounded it is right. Like that's a nothing play if the defense can make a stop. They could. They go down in the half. Easy touchdown. Felt like Detroit was killing you. But at the end of the day, and I said this yesterday, right? I said that felt like Detroit's best that they could throw at you. Mm -hmm. And it. Got you ten points. Yeah, yeah. You know, thirteen in total, but like, th total. That, but ten points, and like that's that was the best that they could give you that day, and it was thirteen points. That tells me that something's moving in the right direction defensively, that that, that you're you're building up a team that, and, and very much like we talked about in this podcast, still is missing what you, I believe you would say, is the linchpin of the defense, and a three technique. The most you're figuring out how to play this without your most important piece. It's the most important player on this defense yeah. is the three technique, you know. Um, 
and an, an elite one, an elite one, everybody, will, you'll see what happens. You'll see what happens. And you look at the guys that are there, they're doing, they're doing a good job, man. And, I, and I, I say this all the time, and I think when I say it, uh, I'm, I'm taking away um, – or maybe it's like it's seen as like a shot at them, you know, uh, uh, Javon Dexter, you know, Zach Pickens, those yeah, guys, the there. young guys, yeah. these guys there. I mean, I mean, they're, they're getting, they're, they're certainly getting better. hundred percent. And the pieces that are going around them are getting better too. Now I do think they still need to get better at staying in their doggone gaps against the run, you know, unless there's a, that, that's a, just a crazy stunt, that, you know, whatever, but, um, um, and, and the linebacker and, and those, some of those linebackers and safety still need to get downhill, but, uh, but they're, they're, you know, they're doing a good job. They're doing a very good job defensively. I think the the part that gives Bears fans probably the most hope on the future of this team is in two drafts now we've seen Ryan Poles have, I believe, 12 or 13 picks. Mm -hmm. Six of them are starters. Six of them are making impact. That's good. Braxton Jones is a fifth-round pick. Yeah, I mean, and, and he's making an impact on the left side now. Do I think we can do better? Yeah, but I don't think that we're devoid of talent at that mm -hmm. position. Tyreek Stevenson, Bayless Jones. Jaquan Brisker, stop it! Uh, <laughs> why, why, why are you, why are you, why are you taking shots at the kid? Why are you taking shots at the kid? He, he, he did, he did start yesterday. I guess if we count him, uh, seven players, but. Uh, <laughs> That was wild. You calmed down. That was that was crazy. <laughs> that shot that Bayless absolutely deserved. Um, I'm sorry. I just I I don't get it at this point. He's got to have nudes of one of the coaches. That's the only thing I can think, bro. He got he got he's got information, bro. He's got information, bro. They got this man. Here's here's how I know the defense or the 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 the, the kickoff team. This is a whole side, bro. This is bogus. I'm going at him at this. But I said this on my show yesterday. I I, I stand on it. This is how I know that they don't care about Valus Jones, and they feel like kicking the ball to him is more of an advantage. They didn't kick it into the end zone one time when he was back there. Mm. They kicked it short every time. And the new rule is you still can do this and you get 25 yards. Nope, he's running. Now, there were plays where it worked out. Yeah. It was good to see. I don't need to see it no more. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, Lance, you know, Lance, if you want to make survival. some more money – we can put you on kickoff as a returner, and all you got to do is this, Lance. You can, you can get, yeah. I mean, what's what's the what's what's Valus making? He a third round pick. He probably getting about seven fifty, seven hundred fifty k, something like sure. that. He, he, something like that. He doing he all right. Good, he not doing bad. No, yeah, I mean, good. Good, you sure. you you could get back out there for that, Lance. You could extend your career. Bring it back. <laughs> Hall you of Fame I kick returner. <laughs> Just warming up again. Oh, it's a little tight. Oh, shoot. I'm going to miss the game today, coach. Listen, I would, it, you know what? If if someone, you know, they, they were they give me some money like that, say, hey, come on, play one game, you know, I would certainly get in my locker <laughs> and watch all the guys that are getting taped up and, like, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I'm gonna, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's nobody for me to talk to in this locker room. Robbie, Robbie Gold just retired. <laughs> And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, guess. I think what's the funniest part about Shot that is a back, on my in neck. The, back in the day, didn't they used to do like, like, oh, like 70s, 60s. Then they used to do like an all-star game where they brought back the old players and they played an actual game or something like that. No, Maybe no. that was NBA. That's Maybe like, that was NBA. I remember, definitely a, uh, football I remember is not a sport. Seeing listen, that. Listen, you got to remember those old guys, those old guys had old surgeries. So... <laughs> Those old surgeries, like as soon as you – The surgery when, when was you just, hurt, uh, you, Yeah, you had that scar that went all the way down here. He was like, oh, I got a torn ACL. That was the end of my career. You know, guys get their uh, ACLs torn now, man. Yeah. They're, they, they got this a 12-month deal. They're back on the field. Yeah, yeah. AP broke a lot of people. Oh. <laughs> AP messed a lot of people up. Oh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. worst thing in the and world. Went two two oh, stats. Oh, my God, bro. The worst thing in the world ever was – didn't that happen the same time around Derrick Rose? When D Rose tore his AC, it was the worst thing ever. Because everybody's looking at AP like, well, D Rose, why can't you come back? It's like, we jump a lot. It's different. <laughs> it's a little bit different. He jump a lot. Yeah. Hard, hardcore. Hardcore. <laughs> oh, man. I, this win now, back to back divisional wins. As you look at the rest of this season, by the way, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five star view. I know to do all that good stuff. As you look at the rest of this season, you got Cleveland, and then you have three games where. Atlanta, um, the Packers, of course, and who am I missing in there? 
You are missing. I'm missing the one. Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals, right? Three games where you're going to look at defense and say this is very vulnerable defenses that we can attack. If you get this game versus Cleveland, is that kind of the final point for you on the season on estimations made on everyone else? Because I think that right, the last three my games, estimations, my estimations have been. Oh, so you're my, done. My estimations you're in made, already. From a, yeah, from my standpoint, I I know what I, I've I've seen what I need to see. I now I want them. I don't want them to, do, to lose. To, out. I don't want them yeah. to lose out or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that. But I've seen what I need to see about about this team. So you know, like is I'm, back. Fields is back. Getsy back. Yeah, I'm, well, it, it, yes, Ooh, and no. yeah, yes and no. That's the one. That's, that's the one. That's the, big, that's the biggest question yeah. mark, you know. Is 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 Getsy back? You know, I just want to. I want to see. I want to see him start off next year. Let's say if he's here, the way that he ends the year coaching, as opposed to the way he begins it. <laughs> that's what scares me because I thought that was going to be this year. Yeah, I thought he off, did a good job coaching offensively the, last year at the, at the end, to, especially end. on the back end. I don't, I don't, just started off three games. We was like, "What the heck is going on here, my boy?" It's hard for it's hard for me, man, because you know, going through going through coordinators is not a good thing. It's not. It's, it's not. not. It's not. Not. You're not, starting unless, Justin Fields unless it's, unless it's it's you know, and, and unless it's your coach is getting a head coaching job, and then you know, we basically move somebody else from in house. I in the way I would think. Yeah. <clears throat> but going and getting these new coordinators. It, it doesn't equal success. Like it doesn't. It doesn't. So, it, like, we, well, I mean, you see the drop off on the Bills, right? Yeah, the Bills look completely different without Dave Boulder. They yeah. just do. And the, and it, yeah, they do. But you <laughs> know, and, and so it's you know, and I know we, I, I, I'm beat this word into it, but the grass ain't always greener, man. And so my thing is, is, is I would like for to see more creativity. Yeah. And and when I say creativity, I don't mean trick plays. I'm saying quarterback you don't want to called, see that DJ quarterback more called, in the round? Quarterback called runs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, you know, that type of stuff. You know, runs for your running backs. You know what I mean? Getting up the field. And, and you know, if if we want – if DJ Moore is our, our top receiver, and he sure as heck is, you know, uh, let's make sure that he's he's accounted for in those uh, – in that first 15 plays of the game oh for the pass. Yeah. That was – um and I think that's that's my concern, right? I get it. I don't want to take a step back either. Um, but I do believe that there are coordinators out there that could walk into this situation and say, wait, so you just want me to tell Justin to throw the football to DJ Moore? Yeah. Can we do that in the first and second half? Because there's too many. To me, we w- we're judging Justin off of consistency or inconsistency. We're judging Flus off of consistency or inconsistency. The yeah, defense but- <laughs> has been consistent. Right. To now- me. Justin has been consistent with what's being called in the game. Correct. A lot of what people are upset about is, how do you throw 16 screen passes in a game? Well, Justin didn't call it. Correct. I'm looking at the play caller and saying, your inconsistencies are what the, are the sins that Justin is getting blamed for. Mm-hmm. Justin got his own inconsistencies. Yeah. And we'll, we could you know break them down and stuff like that, but like, we start this game off. We don't throw the football to DJ Moore. We throw the football eight times and a half. So yeah, I mean, like here's the here's the, here's the flip side to all of that. You know, um, you come out and you say, like everybody says, okay, throw the ball to DJ Moore, and they come out and um, and that's what the Bears do. They, you know, they have 15 passes, and of those 15 passes, six of them go to uh, or targeted at, at DJ Moore. Yeah, and you do this every week. Okay, um, DJ Moore, DJ Moore stats. Now I'm a core defensive coordinator. If you're any doggone good as being a defensive coordinator, the first thing you're gonna do is look at personnel, look at stats. Right. All right. You know those stats. It's gonna say DJ Moore has in week week eight he has 80 catches. Right. The next guy is Cole Komet. He has 20 catches. Right. It's very easy to it. It's very easy right now to know how to stop you guys. I, I agree with that. I don't think that you do that the whole game, right? But I think that there's something where you set a precedent on, right? And and as a de- as a defensive player, if you knew that they were going to throw the football to Randy Moss, you know we got to watch Randy Moss all game. I'm putting Peanut on him, right? And we got Campbell Johnson, and, and y'all we're gonna keep Peanut's gonna travel with him. 
and you guys, I think the difference is too, you guys had a DB that y'all would just like play him straight up. You know, a lot of a lot of teams now do a lot of we're gonna help him out, we're gonna make sure that he don't get off. Yeah. All right, that means on the other side, somebody's open. And I think in the third quarter, we saw that, right? Justin comes out, throws the football to DJ Moore. We see Detroit go, all right, time to try and stop DJ Moore. And then all of a sudden you get Terrell or uh, uh, Tyler Scott with a catch. You get Bayless with a catch. Yeah. Cole gets two catches in there. It opens things up. I th- I'm not saying throw it a hundred right. times to him. What I'm, you know, what I'm, I, what I'm saying is, is throw it to, throw it to who the open guy Who's is open. in yeah. your read. In your read. <laughs> all right. If I that, will take that as well. If your open guy is DJ Moore, which it's going to be, yeah. then that's who it goes to. But you don't, you defense don't have to play honest. If your number one receiver is catching the ball 40 more times than your yes. number two guy. Yes. There's, you know what I mean? You're going to get a lot of picks doing that. Which that I agree with. I, you're a hundred percent right. But zero targets is crazy. And three <laughs> rush attempts. Well, zero he, targets and three rush if he, attempts. If he's got zero <laughs> targets, then he should be <laughs> wide open at some point. All right. You know what I mean, like, I'm just like, I'm like zero targets and three, and three rushes. He ain't, he's run the ball one more time in his whole career. Well, listen, we ran him three times. One of me almost got hurt. Maybe I'm not, nah, I'm not. maybe, maybe Luke Getzey was like, listen, where did they get a load of our second half? Oh my God. What's up? Luke sleeve. Set him up. Yeah. What's up his sleeve? You know, what's up? His, you know, what's up my sleeve this week, boys? Second half. Throwing the ball to DJ Moore. Mm. Thank you. They'll never expect Thank it. You. They'll never expect mm. it. They never saw it coming. I guess it all works out. Here's the funny part about it, right? The first half, I literally was sitting there sick. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I can't believe we threw the football 18 or eight times. We ran the ball like six. Like, we didn't do anything. And then the second half, you see him going down the field. Justin Fields throwing the ball. They're moving the ball. They're attacking all this. And you end the game and you're like, Luke might save his job. I don't know about that. Like to me, that's that's where Flus. I think Flus has saved his job. I thought he would have saved it if they close out the first Detroit game. Uh, Luke is still up in the air for me because I do think that that's one of those things where, as an OC, we've seen if you go out and you get somebody that says, "I know exactly how to coach that guy" because I've coached a guy like that before. If you go get a Greg Roman, I've got it. I, listen, if you go get a Greg Roman. He's coached. I, listen, I love three Greg Roman. QB, He's coached three QBs like that now. I love, and Greg all Roman. of them have become successful. Greg Roman is one of my favorite coaches. Yeah, he was when I when he was at San Francisco. I, I you know I love what he did there. Uh, you know he he coached on with uh, Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know and uh, well, he's you, see me, with, you see me connecting with, them both dots. Harbaugh. Yeah. With both Harbaughs. See me connecting them dots. There. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but, and, 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 but I just and hate Greg, and he's great. I you know I don't yeah. see him leaving. Uh, 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 OC job for another OC job. I don't think he's, he's you know, there right now. Right. Is he not, I think he's not. I don't think he's on the team right now, right? Oh. Well, is he still in Baltimore? No, no. no. He's, he's gone now. I think uh, Greg Roman is a uh, is a free agent there, Lance. He's uh So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, <laughs> um, I listen, I, I love Greg Roman. I do. Hey, 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 I, hey, I, I said, I said, but he's I, a free agent. And Lance got a little excited a little bit. Was, yeah, <laughs> hey, he thought you were still in Baltimore. Nah, he's free, baby. Uh, yeah, he's one of, he's, he's one, he's one. But, you know, it's, again, you, you don't know who that hire is going to be. And there's, there's, there's continuity here. Yeah. And Getsy is at the point now where I've played with this kid long, long enough. Yeah. You know, we have a gr- great expectation of what's going to happen with him, you know, and if we've seen, we've seen enough flashes to know he can run, he can run an effective offense. Yes. We've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've seen it. I'm, I'm more afraid of the next guy doing more damage than help. Right. Cause it's a roll of the dice. I'm with you. It's a roll of the dice. And then there's more patience where you're like, Ah, all right, we got to give this a year to see, you know, he's, he's, get his stuff, you know. But and you don't have that level of time with Justin right now. You're you're in. I mean, you still got gonna, two if, years, if, yes. If, but if we're gonna progress, right? Let's progress. And the things that hold you back from progressing are what, you know, changing your quarterback, right? All right, going out getting a new quarterback, it's gonna change it. That changes everything that you're that your your approach. You don't know what's what you're gonna get. Changing your head coach. Changing it would change the staff, which changes a whole lot. Yeah. Changing your your offensive coordinator, that is another one where it's like we you don't you know, maybe we get Greg Roman in here. 
and he's doing things that they were doing, you know, they were doing in Baltimore. Yeah. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Right. You know, maybe there's a time of, uh, of adjustment where he's like, okay, you and Lamar are different. I, I don't, I can't run it like this. We got to yeah, run it yeah, like yeah. that, but it's still, it's still going to take a, a step back, no matter how short or how long. Yeah. There's an adjustment period. 100%. So it's, it, it, that's all. Whatever happens, we're gonna roll with it because we're Chicago Bear fans. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. That's why. That's what I say all the time. I'm like, they, they're like, well, what are you gonna say? Because I, I, I support Justin. I like Justin here. I want him to be my quarterback next year. And was always, what are you gonna say if he's not the quarterback next year? I'm, I'm gonna cheer for the next guy. Whoever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you want? I'm, gonna a cheer and critique the next guy. Like, yeah. oh, okay. I, I cheered for Mitch. I cheered for Tyson when he yeah. was under center. Yeah. Like, I don't. I'm never. I don't have the ability to. to not cheer for my team. Correct. Like I, we can be zero and eleven, and I'll be like, win game twelve. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the guy that is probably um, um, in a place of concern is is probably Tyson Badgett. And mm. the reason why I say that is, we get these picks. Let's say we get we get we're, we're gonna get picks. Tra- yeah, we're, tra- yeah. we're, we're getting trade picks. back. Come on now. And we get a couple of extra six or a couple of extra five, oh. you know, and there's, cause there's some quarterbacks here. Yeah. There's a quarterback that's available. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the sixth round or something like that, I'm sure the bears are probably going to take him if there's a guy that's back there, you know, and it's just, wouldn't you, mm, maybe I'm not saying, saying you're wrong. Maybe, maybe. I, 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 listen, yeah. I like Ty- Tyson, but this is, the, it's a business. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a business. And is there a better, a is there a better QB? You know, let's say like Spencer Rattler. Yeah. Spencer Rattler is available in the sixth round. Bears gonna be like, hmm, I, come on, you'll go for this guy. Yeah, like, grab him, you know, and see what we see what we do and let them compete. That might, hey, that might be the case. I wouldn't be surprised by that. I, I think, I think there, there's a strong possibility of that. There's, a, I, mean, I, I think don't, there's I don't a think, strong possibility of that. I don't, I don't see that as being a, a problem for Tyson mentally. I think yeah. he's like, bring him in, I'm, I'll, I'll beat him out. Tyson's going to be in the league. He'll, I'm he, he's going to be in the NFL. It's just a matter of is he going to be here or not. Because he's, to me, he's a he showed in his time here, I can step on that field and I'm going to go out there with confidence no matter what. I might throw an interception, but guess what? I'm going back out there. I'm going to be confident. <laughs> I mean, I look, look. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw an interception, hey, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be confident hey, about hey, it. Hey, listen, okay, listen. Put me back out hey, there, coach. That, that's that's half the battle with these quarterbacks, right? Like you know, like listen, hey, because because if pick, I go out, I throw a pick. I'm hey, put me back in because I'll throw another one. Okay. <laughs> was that? Never mind. <laughs> that was that was an easy joke there. That was an easy joke there. Uh, but we beat uh, Washington this year. But uh, hey, man, uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in to show and love. Uh, Lance, what's your outlook for the finish on this uh, on this season? Are you positive right now with the Bears finishing this season with, I, I guess I'd say, a, a competent record, right? I mean, we got four games left. Right. We beat last year's record. We beat last year's record by, year's by two record. games. So, you and know, it's progress. how many more do we get? It's, it's progress. You know, listen, to, they come out with the right – the way they're, they've been playing – um, I like our chances in most of these games. This Cleveland game is going to be interesting. This is the toughest because one. We had, because uh, I think we struggled uh, pass blocking wise yeah. uh, against the Detroit Lions. And uh, very much watch, mightily, yes. Yeah. When you watch, uh, you play against this this Cleveland line, uh, they're going to match Miles Garrett up with whoever they believe the weakest link is on our line. And that's what he does. They'll put, he'll put him over the center, they'll put him over the guard, they'll put him over the tackle. And uh, he about to cook Nate Davis all day. Man, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be it's gonna be some right. So there's so there's gonna get some we're gonna get some work now. We're gonna get some work, and I, I hope we have a plan for this. Yeah, that's what I mean. I hope we had a plan. I hope that we learned from the last time that we played Cleveland. And they had the ten sacks. All right, okay. Let's let's leave a little help in. Let's leave a line, let's leave a running back in. All right, let's leave a running back in. <laughs> Roshan six playing, man, six, Roshan playing all day. <laughs> six to seven man protection. That's what you know what I mean. Let's see that. Let's see, let's 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 see what happens here. Let's let's get them off there. Let's get them off their their uh, their space and and find some success. Let's see what's going to happen, man. Let's hope we finish out this season on a winning streak. Yes. I don't care how it is, man. I I want to see. Uh, let's go. Let's let's stay in the hunt. Let's go get a playoff run in us, bro. Because as you look at, I'm not gonna lie. I looked at the draft count. There's a lot of six and six and seven, mm-hmm. seven and six. Mm-hmm. Five and eight. There's a lot of a lot of mediocrity out there. Yeah. It is what it is. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave that five star review. Y'all know what to do. As always, it's your boy Pat the Designer for Lance Briggs. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down. Peace.